Whether you're a beginner shooter or you've been doing this for quite some time but you haven't fully understood this yet, MOA and Miller Radians is a crucial concept to understand, especially as we start shooting at longer distances. Today we're going to talk about both of these systems of measurement, how they differ from one another, and then I'll bring up some important considerations you may want to make as you start buying gear like rifle scopes and spotting scopes. Let's jump right into it. The one thing that these two systems of measurement have in common is that they are angular measurements. Okay, so while the imperial system has feet and the metric system has meters to measure distance, these two systems respectively have degrees and radians to measure angles. Let's talk about what these specifically mean. For most Americans, if you're used to the imperial system, MOA is the measurement system that will come most naturally to you. MOA is an acronym and it stands for minute of angle, which represents 1 60th, like how there are minutes in an hour, of one degree, right? So if we were to imagine a circle and there's 360 degrees in a circle, there are 60 minutes in each of those degrees. So if we multiply 360 by 60, we're gonna get 21,600 minutes of angle in an entire circle. When we translate this to shooting, the easiest way to understand MOA is that every one MOA is going to represent one inch for every 100 yards of distance. Now, before you come at me in the comments, I know it's truly 1.047 inches, but for all practical shooting purposes, it is best that you round down and just use one inch uh, for every 100 yards. Even at 1,000 yards, this is only going to take you off half an inch. Now, the key phrase here is for every 100 yards, because since we're talking about angles instead of arbitrary distances, the difference that the angle is going to create is going to change in size based on the distance that we're concerned about. So as an example, half an inch at 50 yards, two inches at 200 yards, and 10 inches at 1,000 yards are all represented by one MOA. The other measurement system is referred to as mills or MRAD or Miller radians. It's all the same thing. Instead of using degrees, the metric system uses radians to measure angles. Going back to our circle example, if we wanna find out how many radians are in a circle, we simply multiply two times pi. That's important for later. But that gives us 6.283 radians. Now, milli, meaning thousand in Latin, is going to multiply that 6.283 by 1,000, giving us 6,283 milliradians in a circle. Yes, that is right, I think. <laughs> Now, if you're anything like me, this is sounding super complex compared to MOA. I did not realize the beauty of the mill system until I picked up Ryan Kleckner's Long Range Shooting Handbook. In this book, he breaks down why mills are so awesome, and I will try to do it justice right now. There are two times pi radians in a circle, right? Well, if you divide a circumference of a circle by pi and then two, you're going to get the radius of the circle. The important thing to note here is that when we're talking about shooting now, this radius actually represents the distance that we're concerning ourselves with when it comes to shooting, right? So this radius is here, boom, this would be the radius here. And there's 6.28 of these. So one radian actually represents, if you were to take this line and bend it along the circumference, you're gonna have to do that 6.28 times to get all the way around. What does this mean in practice and why do we care? All you need to know about mills for it to work in your brain is that regardless of the distance that you're shooting at, one milliradian is going to be one one thousandth of that distance. So for example, if we're at 100 meters and we're shooting, one milliradian is gonna represent 10 centimeters. If we're at 1,000 meters, one milliradian is gonna represent one meter. And this works even if you're using imperial measurements for your distance too. So at a thousand yards, one milliradian is gonna represent one yard. That's the beauty of the mill system, or at least part of it. Now, you're probably not watching this because you wanna hear me yap about math and you're trying to pick out uh, a scope, a spotting scope, some something that has a reticle and um, you're trying to compare the two systems. So here's a couple of points to consider when we're talking about MOA versus mill scopes. So the first reason mills are better is uh, wind calling. So we could do an entire other video on wind calling that is outside the scope of this project. But what I will say is wind is bar none, way easier to call 
using Miller radians than it is to do the math with MOA. And the reason why is because of the base 10 system that uh, radians works on. The second point is compatibility, not just with other gear, but with other people, right? So most spotting scopes and um, organizations such as the entire US military has pretty much standardized on Miller radians. So if you're using MOA scopes, there's more than enough data out there for you to succeed with it. But if you're trying to work with what most people are using that are into long range shooting, I would use Miller radians. Okay, the third point here is dialing. And this is really only a long range problem. When you get into truly long range shooting and you are working with uh, weapon systems and scopes where you're going to actually be dialing for range and not just holding with subtensions on your reticle, it is much easier to dial in mils and uh, remember those numbers because they're smaller than it's going to be to dial in MOA. Because those MOA increments on a scope are so much finer, you're gonna be cranking that thing way more just to get to the same adjustment that somebody with a mil scope would. Cranking that thing, I'm leaving that in. Okay, and the last point here is uh, reticle selection. Now, there are not only way more scope companies that are offering quality milliradian based reticles, but those reticles, uh, when a company makes two versions of the same style reticle, get a lot busier with the MOA system because MOA is finer than their milliradian counterparts. Seriously though, there are no wrong choices. Like don't beat yourself up if you already have MOA scopes. I still own a couple MOA scopes myself. The only wrong answer when it comes to scope selection is buying a scope that has uh, mixed measurements. So for example, if it has MOA turrets that uh, adjust the sight, but it's got a milliradian or mil dot reticle, that's a problem. I would probably look at something else. That is about it when it comes to these two measurement systems. I hope I kept this as short and sweet as possible. There's a lot of other videos out there about this, but they were incredibly long. So I'm trying to fill a gap here by keeping this as concise as possible. Let me know in the comments which system you prefer to use and why. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video made you a better marksman.